The word apologetics comes from the Greek word apologia. It's a defense similar to what you might hear in a courtroom. We see this in Acts chapter 17 when Paul is in Athens. In the first century, a witness was very important. In fact, the Bible will say everything has to be established on two witnesses, not just one. In the other gospel accounts, we know that Mary Magdalene wasn't the only one who went to the tomb that morning. There were other women. But during the first century, for a Jew, the witness of a woman wasn't very valuable. In fact, it really didn't hold up a whole lot. And when we talk about apologetics or a courtroom defense, defending our faith, to have women go and be the witnesses, the first witnesses to the tomb, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And yet, that's exactly how the Bible tells the story. You see, if I were making this story up, I would have sent Pontius Pilate and said he was the first one to the tomb. Or I would have sent somebody that I felt like was important at the time, maybe, maybe a member of the Sanhedrin or maybe even the high priest. I would have sent him to the tomb. And yet, the Bible account says that the women were the first ones to go to the tomb. The story is as it is, as it actually happened. They're not trying to make things up in the Bible. They're, they're not trying to beef this story up or make it look better, somehow more credible than what it actually is. The eyewitness testimony of women that went to the tomb and found the stone rolled away. And what I love about the story of these women Kind of maybe even, even a side note as we're talking about apologetics and how important it is to show the evidence of the empty tomb. There, there's a side story here that I really love. The women went to the tomb early that morning. They didn't go in faith. They didn't go hoping to gain something. They went in love, in service, in kindness. And look at what God did. God honored them and blessed them because they were willing to look out for somebody else. Somebody that would give them no credit. Somebody that couldn't give them credit because in their mind, Jesus had died. And there was no glory to be found. And yet these women, through their love, through their kindness, through their service, are forever remembered in the word forever honored. I want to remind you that during this time is an important time to know the gospel account and be able to share with your neighbor that the tomb is still empty. And here's some of the reasons why. But I also want to point out the fact that this is a great time to be like those women, to show love, to show kindness, to show service to other people. That's what's really going to make a difference now. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Show your love during this difficult time. Ask how you can help. Your church has resources. We want to help people. Let us know if there's a way that we can be serving the community. We'll keep on our mask and our gloves. We'll keep our, our social distancing. But we want to continue to love and serve people in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to continue to make a defense of the gospel. Of the fact that Jesus Christ did die on the cross he was buried in a tomb, and now that tomb is found empty. Praise God for Easter and this opportunity to remember, as, as a world, to remember that the tomb is still empty. Our Savior lives. He loves us. He overcame everything, defeated death itself, because our God's all-powerful. He can overcome the impossible. Let me pray for you. God, we praise you for the story of the tomb. Thank you that we can celebrate that our Savior is risen. I pray that we'll be able to share that message with others, that we'll sit down and open your word with other people, and that we can bring you glory through that. We can see the kingdom grow. Bless your people at Greenlawn as we love and serve and show kindness to this community. Let us always point to you and seek your glory in all things. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Church, be blessed this week as you share God's love, his kindness, as you serve your neighbor.